All right, so I have fallen down the hole of period correct undergarments. Um, and I'm about to start making my first piece. I've been researching for several weeks. I focus mostly in my costuming on the early 1800s through the 1860s. And so I've been researching all the different types of undergarments that were worn for those periods. Um, majorly, there is the Regency period, which had one set of undergarments, and then the antebellum slash Civil War era, which had another set of undergarments. Um, there were some differences from between 1840 and 1860, um, but they were definitely more similar than what you see in the Regency period. So today I am going to be working on my first Regency undergarment and I wanted to take you guys along on the process. Um, I made a Regency dress for a client, as you can see right there in the background. It has a lavender ribbon that goes around the waist. It's made of a cotton voile, and while it came out beautifully and is very period correct because um, they made very sheer dresses then, it's quite sheer. It's actually more sheer than most of the voiles I've worked with before. See how well you can see my fingers through it? And so I'm making a petticoat to go underneath the skirt. The bodice is lined, so that's not a big issue, but the skirt needs a petticoat. So I'm going to make a petticoat that just has straps. So the straps would run on the shoulders and then it would fit right under the underbust where the waistline of the dress was. And then of course it would go to the hem of the dress. So I'm gonna be doing that out of a cotton batiste. Um, and I am going to take you guys along on the process. I'm super excited about it. This is a very simple um, project. So if you are a beginner sewer and you're not com comfortable um, if you're a beginner seamstress, I should say, and you're not comfortable attempting the outerwear on your own, you can definitely attempt some of these undergarments on your own. Petticoats, um, chemises, shifts, all of those are fairly simple and great beginner sewing projects. So I hope you enjoy this journey with me today. I'm going to show you how I do it from beginning to end. All right, so I have laid out my batiste. Um, cotton batiste is very period. They actually used a lot of cotton muslin, but it's not the same as what we tend to think of as muslin. These days it was more like what we would consider gauze. Um, so this is a lighter version, of course, than our current muslin. So it's very close to what they would have used. Um, I put my salvages to my salvages. I've measured the skirt. I'm going to make the petticoat uh, squares 36 inches long, and I'm just going to cut the width of the fabric because this dress has gathers in both the front and the back, I'm gonna gather the petticoat to match that. So however you make the dress or whatever your dress is like, you want the petticoat to match it. So if you had a flat front Regency dress, then you would do the front of the dress flat, and the back, or the front of the petticoat flat, and the back of the petticoat gathered. But because this one's gathered in the front and the back, I'm going to um, make it the full width of the fabric. And you want your petticoat to be a little less full than your dress. And so this is gonna be just slightly less full than the dress is. So I like to use these cutting boards. They have all the lines on them. So I've already lined everything up. Um, and that way I know that when I cut, it cuts straight. Make sure everything is flat and smooth as possible. And then I'm just gonna cut straight at the 36. I'm going to cut two, one for the front, and one for the back. Now the dress skirt has a slight A-line to it. Um, because of the width of this fabric, I don't have enough to be able to do an A-line, which is fine. It's still going to be fine for the style. If you did want to do an A-line with 45 inch fabric for a dress that was cut on 60 inch wide fabric, you could put gores in the side. Um, but I'm not going to do that. So here's my first square, that can be my front, and then I'm going to lay my fabric out again for my back. So line everything up and this is a scrap. So it's just barely going to be enough fabric for what I need. Oh, my soldiers are not matched up. Let's fix that. All right. Make sure 
everything once again matched up to the line so I can make sure that everything is cut square, especially when you're cutting something like this. It's just a big square. All right, I'm going to cut across with the 36 again. Make sure I measured at the top. Okay. So there's my back. Now, what I need is I'm going to need two bands that go right under the waist, or right under the bust line, because that's where the um, petticoat will fit. Um, the under bust on this dress is about 43 inches, and so I am going to need to make my waistbands or under bust bands about 43 inches finished. So I don't have enough fabric to cut one big 43 inch piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a front piece and a back piece. Um, so I, let's see, if I look at my width, I'm right at 23 inches, um, which actually isn't bad because I'm gonna need about an inch worth for seams. If I do five eighth inch seams, I'm gonna need an inch and a quarter. If I do half inch seams, I'm gonna need um, just an inch and then I'm also going to need to be able to overlap it and put some sort of button on the back or actually I'm leaning against doing the button I think I'm just going to do cords that come out of the waistband um, cotton cords and they can be pulled and tied but I'm going to do the waistband slightly bigger than the under bust measurement because it's going to have the cords in the band so that they can pull it to fit them exactly um, so I'm going to lay this on my line here, I'm going to cut it at, so if I do half inch seams and I cut it at 23 inch wide, that takes it down to 22, which gives me about two inches of ease or extra over the actual body measurement, which is perfect because they can then just pull in the cord to fit exactly. Um, and that was the beauty of Regency dresses was a lot of times they were easier to fit, um, not only on the wearer, but also if someone wanted to borrow the dress, like we think of in Pride and Prejudice, where you have five sisters all in a row, and if you wanted to borrow someone else's dress, it was much easier because they had a lot of cording in them, a lot of times in the neck and under the bust, and you could just pull the cords to fit yourself, and then the gathers would be more or less based on your size. All right, so I don't want my band to be very wide. I looked at an extant um, petticoat, a picture of one, and it is not very wide in the picture. So I'm thinking maybe I want the band to be about an inch wide finish. And so then if I take off my seams, or add on my seams, that'd be an inch and five eighths. And then I want to double that because I'm going to fold it. So that is going to be three inches and a quarter. Um, I think I'm actually just going to do half inch seams to make it easy on myself because these are inch mark lines and so then I can just cut straight and not have to worry about um, not have to worry about that extra quarter of inch and just do half inch seams instead. All right, so there's one band and then here is the second band. So for the straps, I'm thinking I'm just going to use some ribbon. I'm going to dig around in my ribbon stash and find some ribbon. And then the cotton cording that I was talking about running through the waistband, I think in this case, I'm probably actually going to use some ribbons. I would really like to do the cotton um, cording, but I don't have any on hand. And I just got home from Joanne's. They don't have any. That's the right width. And so I'm gonna to have to order it and I need to get this um, to my client as soon as possible. So I'm not gonna have time to wait for it. So I'm gonna make do with some grow grain ribbon. Most likely I'll dig around in my stash and find something. So that's how easy the pieces are. I literally just cut those out. And um, so you just need a piece that would fit your under bust. You could do one big piece if you had fabric that would work and by about three inches wide. And then you need your two squares 
Um, you want them to be just slightly narrower than your skirt and uh, in the front and then slightly narrower in the back. So that is how to cut out the pieces. All right, so I am at the sewing machine now. My favorite part is the sewing. I don't always love the cutting out or the designing, but I do love the sewing. So here's what I've done is I took one of those uh, big panels that I cut out that was 36 inches by the width of the fabric. I split it in two and I've put together the main body of the petticoat. So here's the back, half of the back, the side seam, the front, you can see the 45 inches in the middle, the other side seam, and then the other back half. I surged the back edges um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down about 10 inches and then I will do a 5 8 inch seam to join these two back halves together and then I'll flip this back 5 8 inches and stitch it down. Um, and then what that will do is that will go on the edges of the waistband which will then um, have the cords to tie it together and hold it together. Um, you need to give about 10 inches right here so that they can get it over their head. What I did for the waistband was instead of worrying about it since it's a petticoat, I just did the seam right here. That's going to be the front middle. Ideally, I would have wanted to cut this in one big piece. Um, whatever the me measure of the underbust was plus about one or two inches of ease. But I decided since I was using a scrap um, and it's a petticoat, it doesn't really matter if it has a seam. In the front middle. So the next thing I'm going to do is like I said join the two back panels in the middle and I'll start about 10 inches down do a 5 8 inch seam flip this back on the 5 8 inch hem it and then I'll be ready to run two rows of basting threads along the top and gather that to my waistband. <laughs> All right, so I now have this gathered to the waistband. So you can see what I did was after I hemmed it, I left 5 8 inch with the waistband sticking out. And I'll show you guys how to deal with that in just a minute. I ran my two rows of basting stitches, which is how I always do it, um, along the top in one big string or one big stitch. And then I gathered it. Now, like I said, you want to make sure that you mirror the dress. So in the case of the dress I'm making this for, it has three inches on either side of the side seam. So a total of six inches on the side seam that don't have any gathers. The gathers are only in the middle of the back and the middle of the front. So I made sure and moved the gathers only where they are on the dress so that it matches that. Because the thing is, is that with Regency, they're going for that Greek goddess look that smooth look and if you have gathers coming out of the side it makes you it sticks out on the side and makes it look wide so that's why you want to mirror exactly the way the dress is um, and sometimes I've seen even I think in the extant example this was not gathered this was actually pleated in the back so you can pleat it for an even smoother look if you want I also want to show you guys the opening so you can see how I did that so I did the seam, of course. I left the 10 inches open. I folded back the 5 8 inches here. These basting threads are getting in the way and looking confusing. And then I just stitched. And I stitched it in one stitch. I don't know if you can, or one long line, because I just turned the corners here, stitched across, turned the corner. It reinforces that right there. And then once I do the edges on the waistband or the underbust band, then this will just meet right here. And then the cords will come out of the edge of this and they will tie right there and be adjustable. Okay. All right. So I've stitched the waistband onto the skirt. I gathered it um, and stitched on. And then I pulled the basting threads because usually when I stitch, I end up stitching right inside the second basting thread. So it's usually showing. So then I just pull them out so that they're not showing on the outside. So I've already done all of that. So now the next step is finishing the waistband. So I'm going to flip this over and here we are on the back. 
So there's two stops that I need to do. Let me lay this a little better for you to see. First, I need to flip this under 5 8 inch because I flipped it under 5 8 inch on the other side. So now I need to flip it under 5 8 inch on this side. And then I'm going to eventually fold this over, iron it, and top stitch it in place. But before I do that, after I've folded and ironed this over 5 8 inch, I also want to fold this over. So I'm going to fold this and then take this and fold it as well so that it's even with the edge right here. Then when I fold this over, this is a lot of folding without having iron, so sorry that it's messy. Then I will top stitch it and I'll stitch in between to make the casing to run the two sets of cording in. In this case, I'm gonna use grow grain ribbon, not actual cording, but something along those lines would work. So I'm going to do all my pressing, top stitch the, all of that in place, and then I will show you the next step. All right, so here is the front of the petticoat with the underbust band attached. As you'll notice, there's no more gathers anymore. I got to thinking after the last step and I went back and looked at my picture and realized that the original that we have a picture of, which is this one right here, does not have any gathers on the front. Um, it only has, as you can see, gathers on the back. So this is the one I'm trying to emulate with the straps. Um, I'm not going to put this much trim at the bottom. I'm just going to put one row of eyelet. But um, I realized that I was incorrect in putting the gathers. If I wanted to be historically accurate from what I could find, the other petticoat that I've been able to find a picture of didn't have gathers in the front either. So even though the dress has gathers, I'm going to make the front of the petticoat flat. So I ripped all that out, put it back together flat. It still, of course, has the gathers in the back. Um, but one of the problems with Regency dress fittings is that if you don't fit them correctly in the front, they can give that pregnant look. And so I was afraid that if I left those gathers in, it would give a pregnant look um, for the wearer. So I have the casing run. Um, you can see I did two rows of stitching all the way across. So I'm going to run one row of ribbon in here and one row in here. And then it will come out on the back edges and tie to tie up at the back and the wearer can pull it to fit exactly how they need under their bust. Um, I gave everything a good pressing. So that's one thing to never forget when you're sewing is just stop and give everything a good pressing. I press the band, I press the skirt, press the side seams. So here's what I'm gonna use. Um, ideally, I would love to use cotton twill tape because that would be more historically accurate. But like I said, I'm gonna have to order that and I don't have any on hand. So this is a great substitute. This is Grograin Ribbon. I just picked this up from Michaels. Um, this is 1 8 of an inch wide, white. So I'm just gonna run one row in that casing and one row in this casing. Um, there's two different ways to feed it through. Um, I'm probably actually gonna use your simple safety pen. Just put it at the end of the ribbon, run it through the casing. My casings are wide enough to fit a safety pin that size. If you have something that's not, then I recommend something like this. I got this one from Farmhouse Fabrics. Um, for just, you can see the price tag is still on there, $249. And it is amazing, this little needle thing has an eye hole big enough to run uh, ribbon through, but the end is not sharp enough that it will um, pierce fabric. It does a little bit, but not a lot. So those are your two options that are the two options I like to use for running ribbon um, and cording through casings. So I'm going to do that step next so that it's ready to tie. Because I took the gathers out of the front, I had to cut some of the width off the front piece. So I actually now have a piece big enough to make the straps. So instead of making the straps out of ribbon, I'm going to actually make the straps out of the same fabric, the cotton batiste. So I'll make the straps about the same width as the uh, underbust band. I'll do two of them and then... Um, figure out the placement on that after I run this ribbon. All right, so I have finished the running the ribbon in the casings. As you can see, I tied it. I pulled it up a little bit like it actually will be when it's on the wearer. Remember, we cut that waistband to have about two inches of ease. Um, you want at least one inch of ease. You can do up to two inches um, so that it can be pulled to fit. You can get it on and pull it to fit. Um, I forgot to mention the front panel after I cut it uh, flat, how to make that. So what you want to do is you want to measure across the front of your bodice from side seam to side seam and then cut that panel, the width of that, plus one inch of ease and your seams. So one inch if you're doing half inch seams, uh, one and a quarter if you're doing five eighths inch seams. Um, so that's how I figured the width of that panel in order to make it flat. 
Um, when I cut these ribbons, I tie little knots on the end to keep them from unraveling, but I also, um, in order to kind of figure how long to make them past the casing, I do about 10 inches. So that way it gives plenty of room to tie a bow and have a little bit of a tail hanging. Um, so that part's all done. And then I went to the hem. I got my eyelet, which this is some vintage eyelet I got from a lady from the 70s. Um, and I just put right side to right side, stitched along here, and then I just flipped it, pressed it out, and then I'm going to top stitch right here to hold it in place. And that will have the bulk of it done. Then all I have left is the shoulder strap. So I took the piece that I cut off the front panel and I cut three inch wide strips and then I, <clears throat> I just folded them in half, stitched them as you can see, and now I need to turn them. So what I like to do in order to turn them, I wanted to show you guys this trick, is I get a bigger safety pin, a little bigger than the last one I used to run the ribbon and I run it through the seam because it's going to get a lot of pressure on it so I don't I want it in the seam not in the part of the fabric that's going to see toward the edge and then I take that safety pen and I open up this channel and I flip it in there there we go now once I flip it in there you can see the safety pin is completely in there I just start pulling pull it through so that it's flat and I gather some more flip through so it's flat and then you just keep doing that down the whole width and that'll flip it out for you so then I am going to have to figure out how long to make these shoulder straps and where to place them so once I get these flipped out and pressed then I get to experiment with that I'll be looking at the original example again to figure that out um, and also measuring the dress that this is going to go with to figure out the length all right, so I'm ready to determine the size of the straps. So when I look at the picture, the straps have to run underneath this little narrow shoulder, okay? Um, so they're gonna have to be way far over on the side. And I know that when I made this dress, here's my side seam, and I know I came in three inches before the gathering started. So, and that kind of runs way up on the edge like that. So I'm kind of thinking that's what I'm gonna do on the slip is I will run the straps just about three inches from the side seam on the front and three inches from the side seam on the back and then they'll run right up underneath here. Now, in order to get the measurement for how long to make those straps, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my measuring tape and I'm gonna measure from that part point. I can't do it while I'm holding the camera and the measuring tape, but I'm gonna measure from that point all the way up over the shoulder seam all the way back down to that point on the back. And that will give me the measurement. Of course, I'm going to add my seams to that, which I typically do um, about a half inch seam on each side for that. So I'd add an inch. Um, and then when I stitch, I'm going to stitch in the ditch that I made for the, um, let me show you, the stitch in the ditch that I made here. Okay. So I'm going to come in three inches from this side seam. I'm going to come in three inches from this side seam. I'm going to lay the strap right here and I will stitch on top of this existing stitching and on top of this existing stitching to catch it twice. And I'll do that in all four places. All right, so here is our finished non-bodiced Regency petticoat. I will have to add a disclaimer here, two disclaimers actually. The dress form that I have it on is super small. It's like a woman's extra small. Um, so I, as you can see, I've kind of padded it up with a corset. Also, the corset is not period correct. So please ignore those two things. I've kind of pulled it up to fit so that you can see. Um, so you can see the casing and I have gathered it up on that grow green ribbon to fit right under the bust. Um, so the owner can do the same thing. You can see how the straps come up over the shoulders. There's, when it's laying flat, they're three inches from each side. And you can see where I stitched them. I stitched right on top of the existing stitching to stitch those straps on. You do not want to stitch anywhere else because if you do, you run the risk of catching that ribbon or cording or 
uh, twill tape, whatever you've run in here, and then it won't pull and gather anymore. Of course, you gather it more in the back because you want your fullness sitting in the back for Regency style. You can see where I've gathered it up and tied it here, the split opening. Um, you can also see on the floor, you can see the eyelet, or almost to the floor, you can see the eyelet with the top stitching where I top stitched it to hold it. And then let me back up and you can kind of see it from the side, from a distance. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and ask. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this process and I hope that you're able to create your own Regency Petticoat from this video.